it's on without an announcement. Let's call this meeting of the Ohio City Design Review Committee to order. Uh, Present, we have myself, Doug Wall, uh, from Marinucci, and Margaret Lamb. And, and, today, and today is October 7th, 2021, and I will share the screen now. So we have our first applicant online. Taubman is back today. Yes, so we provided a packet that describes at least the intended paint color for the side of the building, um, some specs on the coating, and then uh, just to relay to the committee that the owner, Brian, did reach out to the creator of the mural, Ryan, I believe, um, and you know, gave him a heads up. It it's, sounds like because of the rules of the building changing ownership, uh, the, the owner has the the kind of right to, uh, you know, displace or or cover the mural. But we're also look about at the five year uh, time frame for uh, the the expiration of. Uh, whatever requirements were attached to the mural. However, Brian did also speak with the artist about the potential of, of doing another one down the road. So sounds like that conversation went well. So as a refresher for everyone on the committee, um, this was, Taubman Law was here last time and it's an SRP project. Um, there was a motion to approve the primary facade um, so the restoration of the front, the storefront, um, the window, the door, and the signage. But we asked them to come back with the north facade and to make sure they contacted the artist, which it looks like they have. And um, we wanted to know the color choice for paint on the north wall. Um, and we wanted them to reach out to their engineer or whoever was proposing the work on the north wall and make sure that it was absolutely necessary. Um, so that's why they're back today to seek final approval for that. Correct. Correct. And, and I know our architect is on the line as well, Josh. Um, we, we enclosed or attached some pictures to this packet kind of from a distance and then kind of zeroing in on the specific masonry, uh, damage that we're addressing. which, you know, ultimately it's pretty self-evident what needs to be repaired. And the intent is simply to repair and replace to original condition. If, uh, if Josh has any more input there, I, I think that that's the reason there, you know, there, there isn't necessarily the yeah. need for an engineer to, to weigh in. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty evident from that picture that was just up the, um, the beam protruding through the parapet at the top on the left side of that picture was from an old um, uh, billboard that used to be up there. So there's pretty significant um, rusted steel that has pushed that up and caused the step cracking that's parapet. Um, so basically just to repair that would be, um, you know, all we're trying to do just to save the top of the building. So will you be dismantling the brick and rebuilding there with the using the existing brick or the steel has already been removed, is that correct? Uh, Thomas, have you, uh, I saw the, um, the uh, tubes on the front for demo. Has that been used yet? I, I haven't been there uh, since last week. When I drove by, yeah, that's that's for the interior demo. Um, the the uh, steel is still embedded in the brick, so we will have to remove the brick around it, uh, grind it, seal it, uh, and then 
you know, we don't, we, we have no way of moving that steel because it's a massive I beam. Oh, it's an I beam. Okay. Yeah. But you are going to coat it with a non rusting something Correct. to prevent rust. Okay. And then, so it sounds like you will have to probably do quite a bit of rebuilding. Yeah, there, there will be some dismantling. You know, we don't exactly know the extent until we kind of start. So you get in there. All right, well, that seems pretty straightforward. I, I recall some mention of adding a door to that, you know, recess uh, somewhere. Was that correct, or am I not remembering that correct? Here's um, the presentation from last time. It was a window, I think, Doug. Window, okay. can you see it? Yeah. That's still part of the program. Yes. Okay. All right, well, it seems like you've, uh, you know, responded to our request for additional information. Uh, does anyone have any additional questions or comments? If not, we'll entertain our motion. Um, I'll make a motion to approve as presented. I'll second. All right, Donna, call the roll, please. Um, Doug Wall. Yes. Antonio Marinucci. Yes. And Margaret Lamb. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Get on it. All right. We have our second applicants present. And then I believe we have land studio and others who will be the representative for this project um hi good afternoon you guys this is greg peckham with land studio um i think maria estes who's the director of uh communications and development is going to take the lead on this this is uh, a project of community west foundation land studio was invited to work with them um, to assist. We're really sort of in the background helping to just get the project implemented. Um, so we'll let Maria sort of introduce the project and then myself and Nancy Boyle and from our staff at Land Studio, we'll just sort of talk about sort of the mechanics of how uh, we'd like to move this forward. So I'll turn it over to Maria. All right, thank you, Greg. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we are here to talk about the Matthew 25 collection. It's a collection of sculptures by an artist named Timothy Schmals, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But first, I just wanted to give you an overview of our foundation and the work that we do. Um, so the mission of Community West Foundation is to advance the health and well-being of our community. And the um, number one way we do this is we're a grant maker. So we fund nonprofit organizations in um, the area that provide basic needs services. So things like food, clothing, shelter. Um, in addition to that, we have other ways that we support um, the community with philanthropic efforts. Uh, one being to other nonprofit agencies. We house a lot of endowments. Um, in addition, we help individuals with their planned giving and their, their legacy achievement in terms of philanthropy. And I also wanted to mention that we are deeply connected with both Fairview and Lutheran hospitals. We were actually their foundation before they became part of the Cleveland Clinic back in the late 90s. Um, and then we became um, a separate entity and support them still to this day, but then also nonprofits, as I mentioned. We are guided by the words in Matthew 25, the areas called out in that Bible passage. Oops, can we go back one? I'm sorry, I wasn't done. The areas, the six areas called out in Matthew 25 are how we make our grants. So I mentioned basic needs. So those areas include 
providing shelter to the homeless, eliminating um, food insecurity. They're all sort of mapped out here on this slide. In 2020, Community West funded over 70 nonprofits and we had our largest grant making year ever, granting 7.4 million um, in grants. Our geography includes Cleveland, Western Cuyahoga and Lorain counties. Those, that, that's the area in which we make our grants. We have large organizations that we support like the Greater Cleveland Food Bank, but there's also small organizations that we support like True Freedom Ministries, which um, goes into the prisons and works with um, folks on their recovery and reentry. So we really are kind of all over the, the spectrum in terms of the size of organizations that we support. Next slide. So let me tell you about how this artwork even came to be for us. In fall of 2020, um, we, well, I shouldn't back up. So we have a replica of Timothy Schmal's probably most famed piece of art, and that's Homeless Jesus. And our organization pur purchased a replica of this statue in 2018. And we did that because it truly is a visual representation of our mission calling to help the least of our brothers and sisters. And we, we bought it with the intention of traveling it around our service area just to raise awareness um, and of our organization, but also just helping people in need. And so we would travel it around every probably like six to eight weeks to different churches or organizations that we partner with. Well, in fall of last year, the statue arrived at St. Barnabas in Bay Village and within 20 minutes of it arriving, someone called the police because there was a homeless person sleeping on a bench um, and they wanted to, them to check it out. And so the priest at that church tweeted about this incident and within days, his tweet had gone viral. Um, national news media, international news media had picked up the story about someone calling the police on a statue. And it, it was remarkable to us the amount of focus that this one sta replica statue brought to the social justice issues of compassion and empathy and helping people in need. And it was interesting to see the the Facebook community pages and the dialogue about privilege and um, compassion. And so this all went down and we kind of took a step back and said, wow, look at the impact our one statue had. What if we took this a step further? And so in talking with the artist himself, um, we decided to go down the path of acquiring the entire Matthew 25 collection, which you'll hear about more um, specifically soon, but our board responded. We, we went to our board and said, we think this is a good idea. We think that um, this would just further the impact that our, our one replica has had. And um, what if we, we raised the money and um, purchased this artwork? And we did, they responded. And so we got land involved. They have helped us tremendously throughout this process. They truly have brought their expertise to the table to help guide us, which has been wonderful. Next slide. So the goals of this project are to elevate awareness and stimulate dialogue around the social justice issues depicted in each. Um, we were deliberate in choosing the placement for each of them. Um, they, as you will hear, are um, on locations of um, our partner organizations, and they're doing the work to impact these various um, human rights things depicted in the artwork. And we also want to enhance the community spaces with a powerful work of art with a strong message. And truly, the, these installations are just the beginning. We have so much planned for activation around this artwork. We want to engage our constituents. Um, We've talked with the artists about coming to Cleveland and almost do a pilgrimage to each of the statues and inviting um, the community to join us and hear straight from him why he did these and um, what inspired him. Next slide. 
So just a little bit about Timothy Schmiles. He's um, out of Toronto. Um, he's internationally known for his uh, Christian uh, sculpture artwork. They are in many different communities um, around the world. Homeless Jesus, as I mentioned earlier, is probably one of his most famous pieces of works, but I know he just commissioned, the, the Pope just commissioned a piece from him in September, which um, was installed, so it's pretty remarkable. And once all of these statues are installed in Cleveland, we will be the second city in the world to host the entire collection next to Rome, Italy. So we're super excited about that. We think this will be great, not only for our, our organization and just to spread the message that we want to, to spread, but also for Cleveland, kind of cool. And with that, I'll turn it over to Greg to talk about the specifics. Um, okay, thank you, Maria. Um, I will be brief and then I'll turn it over to, uh, to Nancy Boylan. Um, as Maria mentioned, um, they, their organization supports over 70 nonprofits um, throughout Greater Cleveland um, and uh, the edges of Lorain County. And so we had a lot to choose from in terms of you know, amazing organizations that are, are doing great work. Um, I think we ultimately um, had a couple of criteria. We wanted to have sort of a critical mass. We wanted, these things aren't all within walking distance of one another, um, but many of them are quite close. So we wanted people to be able to experience the collection of them together to the best of their ability. Um, we also wanted to um, address one thing that I know is super important to this uh, committee in, in the city of Cleveland, which is about sort of sustainability and longevity and care and maintenance and those types of things. So the partners uh, who were selected were based on in part geography. Um, definitely each one of the artworks is aligned with the mission and purpose of uh, that goes along with the sort of theme and the, uh, the chapter of Matthew. That's, that's represented. And we did feel that the um, this sort of cluster of near West Side has such a strong history in the Ohio City neighborhood in general of social justice organizing movements and, and care to people. Um, and that, that was a really appropriate sort of um, geography to, to focus on. So um, Nancy is gonna walk you through each one of these sites and the sort of how we are approaching this. Um, so Family Ministry Center, um, Cleveland Clinic, Malachi House and Parish, um, and then the new campus uh, that's sort of developing up around urban community school and refugee response. So I'll turn it over to Nancy. So, you know, I, I want to make it clear that one of the things that's super important about these is we, um, these are expensive pieces. They're substantial in their weight and their, you know, kind of what they, what they are. Um, they're not moving, um, but they do need to be cared for. Um, and so we want to make sure that we have partners who have the capacity and the resources to, to do that um, going forward. So I'll turn it over to you, Nancy, to kind of walk us through quickly each one of the sites. Thank you. Thank you. As Greg mentioned, the community partners um, obviously will be handling the maintenance of each of these sculptures, um, but we also wanted them to have the input as to where on their um, property that these would be cited. Um, so we met with each um, organization, each partner walked their campuses and um, came up with with the proper location um, that they that they want that they actually wanted. So homeless Jesus, um, he will this this sculpture will be at St. Malachi Parish and it will be installed in the um, right there in the paver section um, parallel to their um, their uh, signage right there. You can see the there's like a red line. Um, that was the best I could do as far as Photoshop goes. Um, so just to give you a, give you a general idea, um, and you can see the the map on the left hand side of the slide. There's that circle um, to give you a general idea of of where this would be located. Next, this is when I was a stranger. This will be located on um, Urban Community Community School. Um, uh, and it'll be next to the refugee response house. Um, this is a larger, this will be installed on a, a, a paver area and it's a 30 foot in diameter paver. And each one will be, so not only will the statue when I was a stranger be installed, but each of those, um, the, the tree stumps will be installed as well. When I was sick, this will be installed at the corner of Vestry and West 25th Street. 
Uh, again, you can see the red line. Um, it'll be installed right in front of uh, Lutheran Hospital's sign. Next. When I was naked, um, the sculpture will be delivered to Cleveland Marble, who um, has generously donated um, the base. The base will be a granite piece. It'll be uh, 30 inches in diameter, and it'll be about, I believe it's 12 inches thick. And the statue itself will be attached to the base. And the base and the, the whole entire um, piece will be installed within the, the um, right of way. You can see the, the red circle there in the tree lawn area. And Nancy, I just want to just want to lay, uh, add into that one thing. So the the image of the artwork it will not sit high up on a on a pedestal base. It will be more or less um, flush with um, with the ground plane. And that sort of section of the right of way in the streetscape there has been sort of um, claimed and beautifully maintained um, by Malachi House as a uh, as a garden. So they've already got some benches in there. They've got some landscaping in there. They've got um, a little bit of signage in there. So this is really just sort of an addition to an already sort of um, you know, kind of, uh, they've they've claimed that and really done a beautiful job of making it a, a really nice sort of experience as a sort of entryway to the, to their facility. So this is just sort of an addition to the garden garden space that's already been created. Yes, thank you, Greg. Next. And when I was in prison, um, so this one has been installed. This is at the Family Ministry Center. Um, it is on a over thirteen hundred pound um, granite base. And each location, um, just so you are aware, each of these different sites will have, as you can see, their signage to the right of the sculpture. And each one of these locations will have this type of signage. Um, it also has a QR code that people can scan and, and gather information about the, the project. Next. So this one is when I was hungry and thirsty. This is already this already has been installed at the Old Stone Church. This is I, I don't know how long ago it was installed, but this is already this actually will complete the um, this this series. This will be the sixth one. So next. And I think we can just turn it back over to, to Maria here, but I think the, the point of this here is it's doing exactly what um, I think Community West had hoped for, which is these pieces are all about raising awareness about these social justice issues and saying that these are, you know, we as a community have um, a responsibility to bring the resources um, to, to help folks um, who need them. And I think that this is a really wonderful way that they have um, kind of bring that mission out into the streets and to highlight their partners um, and to make that, you know, something that is very much part of the sort of public, you know, kind of public consciousness um, for all of us as we're walking through the city. So I think um, there's a thank you slide at the end there that you can go to, but we can take questions, um, you know, on any of this um, that the committee may have. Our hope is to, um, just to be clear, our hope is to, uh, the pieces are coming um, across the border within the next couple of weeks. And our goal is to get all of these pieces installed um, before the Christmas holiday. Thanks, Greg. And I just wanna make a uh, comment for our committee members. Remember, we're not supposed to comment on the art itself, just the location, and that is why they're here. Um, so just a reminder. I have a question about um, when I was naked. Will that infringe onto the sidewalk? I mean, how, or does it really truly fit within uh, that tree lawn space? It will fit within the tree lawn space. And you're not worried about it being too close to the street either. Accidents can happen, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a, a, a couple. Curb, I'm thinking somebody could pull up and swing their car door into it. No, yeah, it's it's actually. I mean, I think this is sort of just you know candidly the limitations of our graphic ability here. Um, okay. It's it, it it does fit um, very nicely in to that that uh, tree lawn area. Um, I, I would say that probably most folks don't um, get out too much on the passenger side there because it's not super convenient given that you're stepping out into a garden space. Mm -hmm. um, 
Additionally, the footprint, sort of the space that it takes up, um, just up where the car is, is pictured in that uh, photograph, there's a bench that has been in, installed in that garden. It, the, so the footprint of the sculpture itself is actually smaller than the bench. Oh. Um, so it does, it does fit nicely in there. Um, we've gone out, you know, measured twice or and hammered once or whatever you say. Um, so we, we're pretty confident that that's not going to be. Uh, and like I said, it, it will ultimately sit you know, nearly flush with the garden space and the, the, um, the, the it's called Kiki's garden. Um, and the idea is that we will sort of, there will be some additional landscape that will be integrated around the artwork. So it will be very much, you know, kind of a part of that garden space. So when you say flush with the, the pavement, does, does, uh, does that not mean you're not going to have that 12 inch high granite base that's gonna be submerged in the, in the ground? No, it will sit, it, I guess it, it will sit into the guard, it will sit in to, you know, it will be sitting on that 12 inch um, granite base, but it, I guess my point is that it won't appear as elevated as, as the one in the image here. Okay. My only question for the one that's located at Refugee Response um, on Urban's campus, I don't know if that's even technically in our jurisdiction, but I'll still ask it. Is it still like well under construction? And I doubt that their schedule is going to be, uh, I guess I don't know their schedule. It doesn't look like it'll be done by December. So is that one going to potentially be installed later or are you guys having a alternative location or contingency for the construction? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, obviously we have to work with the conditions that are, you know, are, are out there. Um, you know, we're coordinating very closely with the, um, the construction teams at, um, urban community. And as of now, you know, we're, we're still working with the idea that we have a um, intention to get it um, in this year. If it has to be um, pushed back, then it has to be pushed back. But in term, from locationally speaking, we're not proposing an alternative location to keep with the timeline. That is the location that um, the Community West wants. It's what Refugee Response wants. Urban community has um, uh, you know, has approved that location. So um, if we have to delay, we'll do that, but that's the location that we're proposing. Um, it's also, I think that our staff came to this group maybe with a public art overlay with urban community quite a while ago. Um, and this was one of the locations it was identified as a, as a public art location. And so this is in some ways fulfilling on the sort of first kind of component of that public art uh, kind of vision plan for this campus. I think we're hopeful that it will go in this year. We're wishful thinkers, but should we run into a circumstance where it's just too far into winter, we'll just have to roll okay. with it. Okay. And I know we aren't, you know, we're not commenting on the art, though I will add that I personally am a big fan of this series and excited to see it in the neighborhood. So thank you for bringing it. Yes, I agree with that. And uh, I'm, uh, Pleased that we're going to have these sculptures in, uh, in the neighborhood to raise awareness. I guess my only comment is that uh, uh, those of us already in the neighborhood are pretty well aware of these issues and have raised the, uh, clearly raised the awareness of people in Bay Village by having a statue out there. Uh, that might be something to work on in the future. Um, I see Tara, you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say that I love this project and I'm excited about um, being able to have this full collection and being the only city besides Rome that would have this full collection um, upon an approval. Um, so I have two questions. One is um, how the uh, sculptures are anchored to the ground. Granted, they're heavy and difficult to move, but I just want to make sure that they're secured. So I wanted to see how they were anchored. And then especially um, with regard to the one at Malachi House that's going on a tree line, which I believe is somewhat part of the right of way, just making sure that the um, permits are pulled for that. But I, I think this, this uh, project is outstanding and really recognize, recognizes a pretty um, virtually ignored and underserved sector of society. So I appreciate the awareness being raised through this. So my hat's off to you guys. I 
I can speak to the installation. Um, so we received the installation mechanisms for all the statues from the sculpture studio. Um, so uh, the what basically what it is is there's a footer or a base poured down below, and there are two centimeters in diameter um, thick uh, threaded rods that are anywhere from 30 to, you know, I think it's about 30 inches in length that are uh, core drilled into, into the foundation. And then it's epoxied and it's attached obviously to the underside of the um, sculptures as well as into, um, into the foundations. Yeah, we, I mean, we can, we have installation details for every single one of them, which is obviously slightly different based on the actual artwork itself. Um, you know, I mean, the, the good thing about these is they have been installed in cities all over the world. So they've got a, a really sort of, um, you know, almost sort of like off the shelf kind of uh, kit for how they get installed. So um, we'll be happy to provide that to um, as a follow up to to Ohio City if um, if desired. It's um, I think it's probably for those folks who are the architects and builders on this. Like it's exactly how you would think that these are installed. There's big you know uh, uh, you know anchor bolts put into the ground, epoxied into place, and the artwork is connected on top of them. Um, yeah, they. You may want to share that with landmarks. They may ask that question or want to see something. Um, but sure. I think it should be fine. Again, yep. my hats off to you guys for this. Thanks. All right. Uh, if there are no further comments or questions. Would someone care to make a motion? Motion to approve as presented. I will second that. Anna, please call the roll. Doug Wall. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, Antonio Marinucci. Yes. That, I heard a grumbly yes. Um, and then Antonio Marinucci, or, uh, Margaret Land. Yes. Thank you, Community West and Land, for your time. And Tara, I will send these yes. notes over mm -hmm. to Landmarks as soon as we get them compiled. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Next on our agenda, we have St. Herman's Fence application. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me fine? Hi, yes. Great. Thank you, first of all, for getting me on the agenda so quickly. I really appreciate it. Uh, second, I'll just follow up with everybody else's. Uh, commentary. That was some beautiful artwork there. And I can't wait to see that in the community as well. Um, I've been asked by Paul Finley, who is the director of St. Herman's Focus Cleveland, to represent the organization today at this meeting. Uh, as most of you know, St. Herman's uh, provides assistance to the underserved community in the area uh, by way of food, clothing, shelter, and social and professional support. Uh, we provided prior to COVID well over 70,000 hot meals a year. That's three times a day, 365 days a year. We have a homeless shelter that can house uh, 28 men at this point in time. And then we provide ongoing assistance uh, uh, for anybody who comes through the doors and meet. Uh, we also have a transition home, which is two doors down from this operation. That's not... Uh, relevant to our uh, application today, uh, but that's for our, our men who have jobs and a path forward and we give them a, a home of their own before they go out totally out on their own financially. Uh, we are a nonprofit tax exempt organization, wholly owned by Focus North America. This is an umbrella organization in Pittsburgh that has several mission directed organizations just like St. Herman's uh, throughout the United States. St. Herman's has been a member of this community for decades and provide, uh, prides itself in fulfilling its mission by assisting those in need while being a good neighbor to the community. To that end, our director has asked us to look at a project that serves two needs. First, it improves the uh, visual look of our property from the street. And second of all, to enhance security by replacing an old chain link fence and replacing it with about uh, with a fence that would extend about 100 feet 
which is from the far southeast corner to the driveway and then to install a gate at the driveway. This will serve as basically a funnel to keep people coming in and out of our property in a restricted area that we can control better and will prevent people from coming through primarily at the southeast corner by the old Franklin Castle, where at times people will come through, camp out in the corner before we can see them or do things that we would prefer that they not be doing. So this way we can prevent loitering, a little better control and access to the property. So today we're requesting approval for the fence. We're also approve, asking for approval for a 12 inch variance in the height. Uh, I believe the code uh, supports a 48 inch uh, variance. We're asking for a 60. Uh, the reason for this is so that we can have greater security, make it a little harder to breach. It's a little harder to jump over a five foot fence than a four. It's also consistent with our neighbors in the area. Um, the Franklin Castle itself has approximately 60, 66 inch fence, which is grandfathered, of course. Uh, we'll be extending off of that, so the look and feel will be similar. Uh, and then there's a property that's cat corner to us that also has uh, a new aluminum fence that was installed probably five or six years ago. That's actually a little bit taller than 60 inches as well. So we think that we're consistent with the neighborhood. It will provide us with uh, greater security. It also blends in nicely with the trees and existing landscaping that we have in the area. You know, if, this, if we just had a fully grassed uh, a lot and we wanted to put this fence up, it would look like a, a, a huge barrier. But I think that the fence will blend in a lot more given the fact that we've got you know, uh, some, some mature landscape and things like that. So I've covered a lot in a, in a short period of time. I will tell you that the pictures you'll see here show the front pictures of the, of the house itself, uh, the area where the chain link fence exists and the gaps in that fence. And then I've taken some pictures of the other sides of the, of the property. Uh, the property is fully fenced in on three sides right now. Uh, so you, just so you can see the nature of the fencing there. And then I've got uh, a couple pictures of, uh, of adjoining properties just for comparison's sake. So with that, I'll open it up to questions and uh, happy to answer anything you guys have. Um, I will start by saying um, this height of fence would require um, a beat and a um, variance. substantial variance. Sorry, I'm looking for the words um, from the Board of Zoning Appeals. So um, that is not something that landmarks can grant. I verified that the other day. Um, so it would have to go before the community and um, the neighbors would have to be in support etc. And then in full transparency, I own the property next door. So that's also to consider. So I know this property very well. Um, but yeah, I don't know what, what pictures would be helpful to see. Um, Jim, a question for you. There's the gate. There's no gate here at the front of the house. Are you guys planning on putting a gate? Yeah, we're planning on putting a gate in front of the driveway, whether that's going to be a swing gate or a full gate. We're not quite sure yet. We're working with the designer on that. It'll be consistent with the fence that we're doing. It could also be a slight transition down in height. That would be okay with us. Uh, but we just want to try to put a, you know, a funnel in a place to protect the house. Uh, and then, so then you're not planning on gating in the front because I know that's totally open and it's not clear here. There actually is a little gate in the front of the house. Um, I, it's not very clear in that picture though. And is this the original fence or is this a new fence? I don't know the answer to that. I haven't been working on, I know there's a lot of projects going on, but I, Paul asked me to help with this one and I'm not quite sure what's been going on with the rest. I know it needed repair. I just don't know what's been happening over there to be honest with you. Is that existing front fence in front of the house aluminum or iron? I believe it's cast iron, but I, I won't swear to that, Doug. Okay. Uh, and so the design of the new fence is going to, except for the height, plan to mimic the design of the existing iron fence? Yeah, I sent a second attachment. I'm not sure if it made it through here that shows pictures um, of it. It did. Called Long Spur Aluminum Fence Pictures, that first one there. 
Yeah. So you, this is the actual fence that we'd be buying that would, that's, in, you know, just in the marketing materials that were provided us. So it has the same look and feel as, um, as the, as, as our, as our existing fence. And it's substantially similar to those in the neighborhood. Um, and then I will, I have one more comment from um, us as a planning, from a planning perspective. Sure. Um, we generally do not support um, fences of this height um, on in the walkable parts of the neighborhood. And we realize that there are um, fences that are this high around the property, but I don't think that those would be approved now. But again, not sure. Well, I know the, the cost is different and there are other other variations you can get on the tops of the pickets of the aluminum fences. And so I wonder if you might consider staying with a four foot height fence, but using, you know, sharper steer points because your organization isn't, uh, uh, you know, serving children. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. What you want to do is keep people from Having the fence, and if there were more pointy tops <laughs> to the, the pivots, uh, that might, you know, provide the uh, uh, deterrent that you're looking for without raising the height of the fence overall. Because I see your, I recognize your point about there are other properties that have taller fences, but. You know, I don't think we want to encourage more of that. I'd like to find other uh, other ways of letting people achieve the security aspect they're looking for a property without, you know, exceeding the, the height limit on, uh, on the fences. Right. I think I, I would agree with Doug, um, although I'm obviously super sympathetic to your safety concerns, both the two fences that you're giving precedence for one is Franklin Castle, which is an original fence. And the one across the street is also an extension of the original fence um, that is at that height. And those are, I think, two outliers in the neighborhood. So my preference would definitely be to keep it at the four foot height. Um, did this receive any feedback from Black Club in terms of variance temperature? We have not talked officially to a Black Club about it yet. No, because they haven't received a notice of nonconformance yet, and I wasn't sure um, if what the local design review committee would say. Because generally, you guys have said no in the past to fences of um, outside of the typical height in the historic district. Yeah, and I just think that being also like very familiar with the property, um, that a consistent fence across the entire, you know, I would hope would improve significantly your access issues. Um, right now it's pretty gapingly open. So I'm just, I'm just questioning if it has to be taller than the four foot or if that will achieve what you want in terms of defining the edge and keeping it safe. I don't have a uh, great answer for you on that. Uh, Antonia, is it correct? Or Antonia? Um, I, uh, uh, I would just tell you that in our discussions, you know, I'm 60 and slightly out of shape. I can jump over a four foot fence relatively easy but I wouldn't even try a five footer. So I, I think that's the nature of the discussion there more than anything else. What's the condition of the fence around the sides and rear of the property? Um, I would characterize the fences along the side as adequate. Uh, the fences in the back, I know we've got to do some landscape cleanup there. There's a lot of ivy growing over it. There's a couple of trees that are there. So I can't tell you um, exactly, because it's hard to see it. Um, the fence, if you look on the, let's see, facing the building, so the property on the, on the, on the left or the west, which would divide our property and Donna's, uh, that is partially um, uh, wood. Uh, the house serves as a fence for part of it. And there's a, there's a smaller chain link fence in there. Uh, and I think that's in decent shape. Uh, the fencing on the Franklin Castle side is, I think the first 20 or 30 feet is an extension of their um, uh, iron fence. And then uh, the house provides part of it. And then it turns to wood in the back, I believe. And that's in reasonably good shape. 
The one in the back is the one I'd have to pay, just take a greater look at, but it's really covered by a lot of growth if you look at the pictures there. I feel like Google Earth shows us a good. Yeah, you can see the chain link fence there behind here. So you guys aren't replacing the chain link fence? I don't think, not at this time. I mean, it's something that probably is on the document. I just don't know for sure. And then here's the former fence that was there. It looks like this year. Yeah. We had a lot of foundation issues there that was, you know, you can see the, the sidewalk and the foundation below it was raised. So I don't know exactly what they did there. So there's currently a gate now and there wasn't before from my understanding. That's what it looks like to me. So currently just the plans are the front fence, um, no side or rear, any lighting changes or additional lighting for security we don't have concerns? Any, I don't know that we have anything on uh, in particular yet for the lighting side. I know that we have just received a fairly large donation to do a fair amount of renovation within the house we're, th we're contemplating and planning right now. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to include anything for lighting. We did talk about maybe putting a security camera or something like that on the house, you know, to see the to see the uh, gate. If you know, if we get one across the thing, that's all just preliminary planning stages, though. Uh, you know, to run power and security and all that stuff. You know, when you got to break up concrete. So I don't. I, you know, we're kind of in early stages of discussion of those things. Um, I would agree with my colleagues. I don't think I would support the higher fence here. Um, I, if security is the issue, I think having a camera um, would be more, more beneficial and then allow the lower fence. And I guess I'm. what's to prevent someone then from walking down the driveway and then onto the property? Well, we would have a gate there. So. Uh, Okay. You know, during the day that'd be open. We get a lot of traffic, as you know, in and out of the building. I mean, once Corona's gone, if Corona goes, <laughs> we're going to, you know, be reinstating our meals. So we have, you know, uh, people walking into the house for meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So the gate would be open during what I'd call normal business hours. And I think the intention then is to close it to prevent unwanted access during off hours. Um, and I'm not sure if this is a concern, but I know I brought this up to you, Jim, and I've talked to um, Paul and Chrysanthi about it, but I know the rear fence, they just started keeping it closed. So fewer people go through, but there's still a large gap in the rear. Mm -hmm. People can still get through if they want to in the rear. So I don't know. And then I've said my concern also <laughs> that the side chain link, I mean, then the front, I don't know. We need, there needs, we need to make sure there's a gate because it's not clear in these photos that there's a gate there on the front already. I think you said there is a man gate going up to the, the front walk. But it's not clear. I see, you're right. And that in the, like, and uh, I know in the former in. fence, there wasn't one. I know I should be able to answer the question. I apologize. I just don't want to say something and be wrong. Yeah, so here you can see there wasn't one in the fence that they had before, but this new fence looks like, I'm not sure what's going on. We can't zoom in on that picture a little bit more to see the condition at the, at the walk. Yeah, I can it looks find like there out. might be a gate. Yeah. Yeah, the purpose is, I mean, we don't really, but I can't tell if they're right. Yeah, I mean, you could check with the local police and Donna used to live next door. We don't really have many security problems. We're pretty aggressive about calling the police if they're, you know, if anyone's acting un unbecoming or not, you know, behaving themselves. So we, we, we tend to not have people call police outside of what we do. Um, so we, we, we want to try to, though, have better control over it, just to every little bit help us. And we just want to continue to be good, 
you know, serve the mission, but also be good stewards of the neighborhood. I will also say that that original sense, uh, you know, I don't, I don't recall, you know, this uh, coming before our committee when this fence was installed, but it doesn't look like it was too long ago. And you know, I remember the original fence and from those. Uh, uh, yeah, in July 2021, it was still there from our Google. Oh, Earth. so this is just recent. So it sounds to me like maybe that was, <laughs> that was, we never saw this. I don't think we did. Uh, so, as I was thinking, I think we would have been reluctant to, you know, prove something so different when we had that fence, even though it was deteriorated, it had a lot more character than what this one had. Um, so, I guess it's, it's already there. I mean, I'd be willing to go along with uh, leaving that there, but. I think we, we need to, you know, be assured that there there is a man gate there. If there isn't one, one will be added. And uh, uh, it would be really nice if the new fence along the front could uh, be more sympathetic to the original fence. Now, I, you know, uh, iron fences are more expensive than aluminum fences. I know that, now, but. I, I guess I'd like to see you all explore the idea of trying to keep something that's more foot height that, uh, you know, maybe has a little bit more deterrent on the, the top of those pickets to, to, you know, dissuade people from jumping over it. Uh, and if you do that out of iron, there's all kinds of, you know, parts available to do that. And I believe there are some aluminum fences that also offer a little more aggressive return in their design. You know, and maybe, uh, you know, if that far corner by the Franklin Castle on the east is, is the big area where people uh, you know, want to jump in because it's, you know, the most remote from the house and so forth. Since you do have that higher fence at the Franklin Castle, if you were to do something a little more custom, you could maybe start out at, the, at a height to match the Franklin Castle, but then taper it down in the first uh, panel or something down to the four foot height uh, to make, you know, that more remote section, uh, you know, a little stronger deterrent. I think that's an excellent idea, Doug. I appreciate the input. Doug, this is Carl. Um, I wonder if they set the six foot or the larger fence back from the sidewalk in line with the front and left the garden up in the front of it would give them enough buffer zone as well. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that, Carl. That's another alternative. If you really feel that strongly about a taller fence, you have to set it back to the uh, setback of the house, uh, which would leave a whole bunch of yards in front of the fence. But, uh, you know, that's that's another alternative you could think about. And do some nice believe, landscaping out there. I believe the code is 12 feet off 12 the feet. front part of the line, I believe. Don't totally quote me. Ninety percent on that one. I yeah, thought twelve it was feet the from the parcel. In the front of the houses nearby. I've yeah. I've gotten variances for this before for clients. Um, I think it's twelve. Okay. Well, but it has from it that parcel line, so it can be uh, adjacent to the house. If the house is, I mean, this house is significantly like it probably is more than twelve feet from the parcel. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I would estimate 20 maybe. So would that be in the overlay district coding or the city codes? I don't oh. know that you're in an overlay district. Okay. Um, the district we are in is two family. I don't know if this property has a variance for use. Probably does. So it might give a different, that yeah. might yield a different result. Yeah, I guess okay. my, I think, 
I guess my suggestion would be for you guys to up, apply for your permit and get your non-conformance letters so that you know what you're up against mm -hmm. and then decide how to proceed. Um, I'm definitely not, I'm not opposed to uh, the aluminum fence style, just the height. Um, the fence itself is, you know, that style fence is fine, in my right. opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also would like the question answered if we need to retroactively approve the fence that was already installed. So I think Yes, I think there's a number of suggestions on the table that could help you, you know, deal with the issues that have been raised here. So, would uh, would you consider letting us table this issue until you can come back with, uh, you know, discuss this among yourselves and come back with a revised proposal? I think that's fair. So would anybody? Uh, Make a motion to table this. Sure, I'll make a motion to table. Second. All right. Um, oh, second. Uh, Doug Wall. Yes. Antonio Marinucci. Yes. And Margaret Land. Yes. Unanimous approval to table. So, Jim, did you understand what they're asking for for the next time you come back? Yeah, I, I believe I do. I'll uh, chat with the folks over at St. Herman's and get back to you and coordinate. Uh, okay, and I'm happy to answer any questions for you too. Great. Thank you everybody for your time oh, today and your you, input. I really appreciate it. All right. Um, who do we have next on our agenda? We have um, 40, 4011 Whitman. Do we have someone here for that? Yeah, that's my property. Okay, great. Dominique. Yep. Where's the pillow windows? Here we go. Okay, so you wanna click through to this next slide. Um, so this is the house currently, and there's a mix of vinyl, um, I think maybe even some, I don't know, like aluminum, and there's a few of the original wood windows. Everything's like mismatched, broken, ugly, so I want to replace all of the windows. I'm proposing um, a pine window with aluminum clad exterior, um, and you can see like the double hung, basically just standard windows. Um, so, oh. Can you go back up? Sorry, yeah. Down one. So for the front of the house, I'm thinking like Pella suggested that I do this grid option. I don't love it, but I'm open to doing whatever you guys think is most appropriate on the front of the house. If it's no grill or whatever, I'm fine with anything. Um, but I was thinking to not do the grill option. What do you guys think? Well, I just want to be guided by it, what was original. And so if uh, those windows have already been replaced once, then we really don't know what was original. But that, I don't uh, think, I don't know that the grill pattern, this particular grill pattern is, is appropriate or likely. I don't know. I would think it doesn't look like his current. No, it doesn't look like it no. belongs And I also I, saw in the, um, details of the drawings that it's grilled between the glass which we would not ap approve um so from a cost standpoint i think and from an aesthetic standpoint i think you're good that with um doing clear double home agreed <laughs> if you see up in the top corner there's like some um sorry i don't know what's going on some detailing up there i would like to try to keep that detailing um, through like a third party. I heard that they can mold it and then stick it onto the window somehow. Um, so I was thinking that I could do that as well. I'm not it's sure the what window. what detail. It looks like a diamond. Is that it's one of the original diamond wood windows? Um, on the top. Is that one of the original wood windows in the house, Dominique? Yeah, that one appears to be original. Um, and Pella could not do that for you? 
No, they can't, but they have like a third party that they work with that does the, um, they do like some kind of molding and then it sticks on somehow. I haven't really figured that out yet, but um, yeah, they don't offer that. I'll, I'll look it up on Google. Okay, yeah, it's really ugly. I'm not sure, I don't know. I live across the street, I'm looking at it right now. I don't know. <laughs> that I feel like that's a really, that that might be original. I know it's an old window, but I, I don't know. It looks curious. very Victorian. For, it is. Yeah, and I feel like, from what I I, like see. you know, a house on Franklin, yes, but right. this chunk of street, do that. I feel like we don't get that very often. Um, I would agree. That looks like something yeah. that maybe was added. And, it, and Dominique, if you, um, it, you know, if, Again, it would be cost effective to not do decorative grilling. Mm. Um, something else we've suggested to people, and I'm not in a while, is if is, is saving with sash and either making a piece of art out of it, or we've even had people hang, not had, but suggested that you can hang it inside the window if you want to yeah. keep that element. But I don't personally feel like there's a lot of evidence that this house would have had something so ornament. Yeah, I mean, I'm not married to it. I just wanted to do whatever you guys think's best. So if you think like just having regular windows, I'm fine with that as well. Yeah, and I save it if like Antonia said, when they remove that, have them save that upper sash for you and then you can always hang it mm -hmm. decoratively. Um, yeah, so. Is this gonna be your personal property or is it an investment property? Um, it's an investment property. There's a tenant upstairs right now. And then I will be staying in the bottom unit um, periodically because I currently, well, right now I'm in Cleveland, but normally I live in San Diego and my whole family's here. So I'll spend like a lot of time in Cleveland. So I'll be living in it as well. So I have a few other things like proposed um, changes that I don't know if you guys need to weigh in on because I've never presented to the board. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit to the kitchen dining. So I want to redo this whole kitchen and the windows right now are not countertop height in the kitchen. So my proposal is to raise them all six inches so they can be countertop height. We typically only um, want the priority is the primary facade. So in this case, the front facade, because you don't have much visibility to the side and the rear. Okay. So um, usually, if I mean, I would make sure that that's accurately represented in your your, um, your permit. But I don't think I have any opposition to raising window sill height. Um, I would just be sure that you're, you, you have wood cladding on the house. So that you're preserving that trim, bringing the trim up, and replacing the, the cladding with with wood cladding, like the filling underneath. Just that's what's yeah. around the window, correct? Yeah, the trim is around the building design. windows. So it doesn't look like. Okay. You just now, want your is... your contractor to patch it appropriately. Um, okay. So that you don't end up with like a chunk of wood filling in that end. Mm -hmm. um, and from my understanding, they're going to be putting them in from the inside because right now, like we're redoing everything. Well, we're, we're like in the process of creating the plans to redo like the electrical and everything. So they're going to be putting them in from the inside. So the trim shouldn't even um, come off at all. Well, let me ask you about the, the kitchen window you want to shorten. Is that if you were looking from the front, from the street view, down the left side or the right side of the house? So, so there's two on the, if you're looking at it on the right side, and there's two on the left side, but they're way in the back. Okay, well, that was my point, as, as uh, uh, Margaret or Antonia brought up the, uh, you know, we look at what the impact is from, from the street, and so... The side of the left side of the house is much more visible than the right side of the house uh, because there's more space between there. So, uh, uh, so yeah, that's a good view there. So I can see, you know, uh, 
back three windows there on the first floor. So uh, the further back on the house those windows are that you want to change, the better. Uh, okay. I do have a proposed change for one of the windows that's visible here. It's the one that's partially visible. The middle one of those three. Or this back one. Um, so like the third one from the front. So oh, if you, okay. that's in the bathroom. So if you look in the bathroom, it can see like the toilet and everything. It's very, you can see it's very uh, large and intrusive. So my proposal would be to ma have it match the smaller window. Well, I would suggest that you use sort of a, you could, there's lots of things you could do. I mean, here there's a blind over it. Uh, you could put obscure glass, you know, opal uh, uh, glass so that it's a non-vision panel, but it still lets light in. Okay, that's a good idea. It's probably less expensive because then your carpenter, you won't have to have a carpenter match the outside of right, the house the wall and, all that. and all of that. Okay. And then which one of these is the kitchen window? You can't even see it. It's, oh, it's on the it goes kind of like in and and it, and facing, but it yeah away in the back. Okay. Okay, then that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So as long as they say they either match or save the trim and then put it put it back in so that it matches the rest of the house, both inside and out, ideally. Okay. So the aluminum clad is fine. That's just mm -hmm. one standard. Okay. Great product. Okay. Yeah. Did you it's tell us the color, color Dominique? What, sorry, what? Did you give us the color? I'm planning to do black on the outside if I could. Yes. I would do, yeah, black or brown would be great. Yeah. Be house. And also, I wanted to mention and see what you guys thought. I'm planning to do the front. And then the downstairs unit, because right now there's a tenant upstairs. And then when she moves out in April, then I would propose to do the upstairs with all of the same matching windows. Okay, great. I don't great. think you should probably just be able to pull that permit and get administrative sign off and not have to represent if it's something, if it's a little okay. material we've already approved. I guess, okay. Carl, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But. That be, if it's all matching, that's fine. Yeah. It would all uh, be the only other question I was going to ask is, Donna, th does Ohio City have a historic photo of this in their files to see if there were grid patterns originally on the windows? I'm I'm not sure, and I can look on Friday. Or actually, I probably could look today. Um, I haven't looked. I apologize. I actually have an appointment to go in two weeks to try to pull some photos from the archive because I believe Good. that there was like a semi wraparound porch. There was a little inlet to the left if you're looking at it um and so i'm trying to find any information on that to see if i could restore it back to the original design but i don't have any details on that right now yeah it'll be, you should be able to see the windows on that as well yeah i'll look it up i bet there is something even if it's from a neighboring house or something mm -hmm. i'll find it yeah that would be interesting I'll share if I do find anything as soon as I Okay. And then if I find out something too, I can like represent if there's detailing or anything like that. I, I think you would be, if you're going to, if this gets approved today and we find more evidence, I don't think the, and not to put words in their mouth, but if you're going to add the grid patterns to match original, I think that could be as part of the approval to say, yes, I'm going to do this if it's there. And if it's not, we'll match. So if they okay. want to do it that way, unless you need to come back. So that's up to the committee. Okay. Right. I but if there's, a, it's Sorry, be clear that if there's a grid pattern, the snap in or between the glass grills would not be approved. They'd have to be, you know, fused on mountains. So they, you know, are on the actual surface of the glass. Mm -hmm. Okay. The true divided, yeah. Yeah. A simulated divided light is the terminology that Paula uses. Okay. All right. Uh, would someone care to make a motion? Yeah, we'll do motion to approve windows as presented without a grill pattern unless historic photos um, give evidence of that. 
And if they and do, it, use simulated divided light. Okay. That was very we'll clear. We'll second that. <laughs> that was very clear. Thank you. Um, Doug Wall? Yes. Uh, I actually have one more question, if you guys don't mind. So you see all this uh, like brickwork in the front. What's the pr protocol for that? Would I need to replace it as is here or could I do like a stamped concrete that looks like brick? Oh, you're talking about the walk? You, yeah, like the walkway right here. It's um, oh, like you can't really tell, but it's broken and kind of degraded and over to the left side as well. So I want to replace all of that, but I don't know what the procedure is. Do we usually even see proposals for just that? No, you can just do that, Dominique. Okay. I don't think we need to. Okay, good to know. I just wasn't sure since I'm like new to the historic district. And if you have questions like this in the future too, I'm happy to answer them really easily. I'll give you have my phone number and my email and that could be something I could easily go over with you. Okay. In the future, especially if you're doing more work to the house. We also yeah. very much appreciate you asking because most people do not. Yes, ever thank ask. you. Yes. I've heard that people get in trouble and stuff, so I don't want to get in trouble. You know, not in trouble. We just don't want people to do things that are the term is inappropriate to the historic district. So. And a lot of time they end up wasting money by doing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all right. So every wait. So Doug Wall, Margaret Land. Yes. And Antonio Marinucci. Yes. Okay. Motion to approve unanimously um, without the grill pattern as presented with the black color windows um, and then if for some reason the historic photos reflect that there were patterns uh, landmarks commission can um, grant that approval okay thank you so much dominique and like you. i said please reach out to me if you have any questions okay i will have a great day you guys thanks all right thank you all right last agenda item Last but not least. Bob, thanks for your patience. Hello. All right. I have the slide pulled up. Okay. This is a uh... A, a very simple non-illuminated projecting sign. Uh, there you can see it, it, it faces Whit Whitman protruding towards 38th Street. The next slide shows uh, the simple design of the sign. And that will be mounted to the brick wall um, we always, if at all possible, try to mount a mortar joint so as not to disturb it, it you know, not to damage any of the brick. Uh, they do space it out to fit typical mortar joint spacing. And I, the only other slide I gave was, is the next one, and it'll show some views up and down the street, but I believe you're very familiar with the area. Um, so obviously it would be on that east elevation there. What and I call the east elevation. And apologies, um, Bob. Did you speak to the block club at all about what you guys are doing here? To who? To the block club. No. Um, I'll connect you with them just so they're aware of your business and you can meet the neighbors. They're pretty friendly. Okay. I don't think you're seeking a variance for this, correct? So. Correct. Um, I maybe our customer Johnson Locks um, Pat is aware of the black club. Oh, okay. I'm with Brilliant Electric Sign representing. Here, I'm gonna look um, I have two. It. I have one. Uh, my first oh, question is, what's the height? The bottom of the height of the blind side? To the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I, I don't know the exact height, but I, I know it has to be a minimum of eight feet. So we're going to clear. Yeah, by, kind of how you by, have it illustrated. It, you're, you're comfortably clearing the sidewalk at height. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you can see it that even if we're if it were to come down to reach the top of the windows, it's it's well above eight feet. Okay, yeah, Naomi. This, this is yeah, Jimmy oh, Anderson, Johnson Locks. I just wanted to cue in real quickly. We we are um, members of our block club and familiar oh, okay, with good. with the block club. I didn't know that this needed uh, presented to them. I can certainly present this to them at the next meeting if that's something you guys would like to see. No, I didn't realize that you already um, have been in communications with them. I apologize. I just have never spoken with you, so I apologize. Um, my only comment, I think, um, aesthetically on content is that the construction Ohio text is really difficult to see. And I wonder if um, the sign would be more effective with just the company name and then using a vinyl on the windows on both Whitman and 38th to add more context um, to your business, just because I think it's that rendering, the rendering mm -hmm. on sheet, I don't know which one, Donna, two, if you could go up one, kind of <laughs> illustrates that I feel like the construction text is just totally lost. Um, um, it, it is, but it's a, it's a trademark. Uh, issue. We have a sister company in Orlando that's actually Johnson Locks. So our Ohio version of the comp, uh, uh, is Johnson Locks Construction Ohio. We are partners with them, but a separate entity. So um, that's the reason for <clears throat> Construction Ohio to this sign in and of itself. Okay, it's not a deal breaker for me. I just okay. Okay. Let's see. I would just ask that it that the drawing specify that the um, that it's going to go through the mortar joint that the anchor will go through the mortar joint. I would like that to be clearly spelled out so that when the time comes, the contractors know exactly what to do. Sure. It looks like there's currently from this very specific. It looks like there's some sort of there are there are. Uh, there are brackets up there that from a previous sign from what I think back Those when were, was, uh, the restaurant. Yeah, I think that they were cloth too or like vinyl. I don't know that they were ever fixed signs or like um rigid for the restaurant. You saying you thought you thought you think maybe there was a uh, vertical banners there strung between the No, I thought that yeah, like I I might be misremembering, but I thought that it was like a those like the poles stuck out, and there was like a vinyl or like a canvas. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaking. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't no, there matter, was there was a restaurant there. Well, there was cha, and there was what was the other one that? Like the Italian the, kitchen. The yeah, one that had a insulted the <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> Poor guy. Was he poor? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Kind of got what he got. What he got. <laughs> I guess while we have uh, the representative of Johnson and Lux on the uh, call here, do you guys have any thoughts about those light fixtures and conduit running across above the storefront windows or uh, doing anything with that? Um. Not that this is associated, but there's a 100% chance that those are going away. We're in the process of working with an electrical contractor uh, on a redesign for that. We're, we're actually going to try to illuminate uh, the recessed brick at the top of the building up on the parapet. So what we want to do is add some accent lighting in those recesses up uh, on the parapet wall, and then those lower lights will go away. Great, look forward to seeing that. Yeah. All right, would someone care to make a motion on the signage? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve as presented with the uh, addition of um, requiring that the bolts go through, the anchor system goes through the border. Second. 
I will second. Uh, Doug Wall? Yes. Antonio Marinucci? Yes. And Margaret Lamb? Yes. Great, thank you. So we've approved unanimously as presented with the condition that the signage be attached in the mortar joints and not the brick, if possible. Great. All right, very good. Thanks for your patience, Bob. <laughs> Thanks, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Um, all right. Um,